Well, the largest hospital in the U.S. state of Alabama has suspended its in vitro fertilization treatments. It follows a ruling by that state's highest court that says frozen embryos or fertilized eggs are the legal equivalent of children. Now, the hospital says that it has to evaluate whether or not its patients or doctors could possibly face criminal charges for being involved in IVF treatments. The ruling by the all-Republican Supreme Court in Alabama has put into question the future of IVF. IVF is considered one of the best treatments for patients who would like to have children but have been unable to conceive naturally. Well, I'm joined now by Jill Weberlins, a law professor at the University of Arkansas. Professor, it's good to have you with us. Let me ask you, what does this ruling in Alabama, what does it mean for people in the states who are already in the process of using IVF, hoping that they can conceive? Well, uh, thank you for having me. Um, that depends on the clinic. And as you just reported, a few clinics are pausing, tempor hopefully temporarily, to try to figure out what the ruling really means. Um, as of right now, what the ruling means is that, that clinics do need to be more careful and make sure um, that they take care of any frozen embryos because if 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 any embryos were destroyed because of negligence, um, that means the people whose embryos those were, those were could sue the clinic for wrongful death now, now that the Alabama Supreme Court has said the embryo is a child. And this, this ruling just doesn't come out of the ether, does it? I, I'm wondering, um, what is the connection to the abortion debate in the United States. And would we be talking about this if the U.S. Supreme Court had not overturned Roe v. Wade? I think we still would be talking about this if the uh, Supreme Court hadn't overruled Roe v. Wade. Um, I mean, this was a very natural decision for the Alabama Supreme Court because they had already held that a pregnancy, so if an embryo in a womb, um, was a child for purposes of this wrongful death um, statute. So it was a very natural next step um, for the Alabama Supreme Court to say, well, also it covers embryos that happen to be in a freezer. I mean, what this can mean, though, for broader, why it worries people about abortion rights in this country is because every time we have a court that says, you know, a baby during pregnancy or a baby is a baby in the freezer if it's frozen embryo, I mean, it, it. the more context in which that happens, the more it seems like, well, maybe it, that it's also a person, an abortion. Mm -hmm. And if that were true, if the U.S. Supreme Court decided that with, with respect to the word for a person in our 14th Amendment, then that would mean abortion mm -hmm. has to be illegal everywhere in the U.S. I, I understand that w with this ruling that possibly a, a physician, for example, doing IVF um, could be charged with, um, with yeah, killing or or hurting, damaging a child. And could you help us understand how the, the thinking there, be, because with, with IVF treatments, the, the goal is to help conceive, the goal is to help create a, a new life. How would the law be able then to, to argue that a, a life was being killed or, or being damaged or hurt? Yeah, and it's important to note that this this opinion has no criminal consequences mm -hmm. as of right now, right? So if if a a clinic were to accidentally destroy an embryo, as of right now, it does not have to be worried about being arrested for murder. Um, but what this what this opinion says is that if the clinic is is negligent in how it stores and takes care of the frozen embryos, that's when the clinic needs to be especially worried. Um, so in this exact case, at least what's alleged is, is there must not have been a lock on the door for the freezer because a, a random patient was able to walk in and, and uh -huh. grab some of the embryos and drop them. Um, you know, this has bigger ramifications too, though, because in the U.S., we do have a lot of embryos in freezers because we take a lot of eggs out at a time. Um, so, and every time, anytime you have eggs in a freezer, you better make sure to be careful with them because otherwise, under this opinion, well, if if you negligently destroy those those embryos, you can get sued for the death of children. Well, well, could, well, could this then be a wake up call uh, not only for Alabama but for maybe the entire IVF um, industry uh, around the world that? Um, yeah, maybe there is a, a tendency or it's possible for health care professionals to become nonchalant about the fact that frozen embryos are just that, frozen embryos. 
Yes. And, and we don't have a lot of regulation of fertility clinics here in the U.S. Um, so, you know, there's no state or federal laws mandating any precautions to make sure these embryos are OK. Um, so, yes, maybe this this uh, possibility of this lawsuit for the wrongful death of children um, would make clinics think more about security. Um, but it's also making clinics think more about uh whether they really want to be doing IVF in such a way that they're storing a bunch of embryos because they're possibly opening themselves up to to litigation. And again, though, this is just this is people suing for the damage for the yeah. for the the death or destruction of the embryos. Yeah. Um, so it's not criminal consequences yet, but these are all things that these clinics are thinking about. Right, right. Doctors are definitely have to have to worry about, and I'm sure that's not going to make malpractice insurance go down either. Law professor Jill Weber Lynn from the University of Arkansas. We appreciate your time and your analysis. Thank you. Thank you. Well, for more now, I'm joined by Professor Glenn Cohen of the Harvard Law School. He's a leading expert on medical ethics. Professor, it's good to have you with us. Um, let me just start by asking you, what does this ruling mean for people who are in Alabama and are already in the process of receiving IVF treatment? Yes, yeah, so the case was about uh, the Alabama wrongful death of a minor statute. The case arose out of uh, destruction of embryos by malfeasance, uh, allegedly by the bank. So uh, the, as you noted, one of the largest providers in Alabama has announced that they're going to suspend IVF. There will be a question about whether people who already have frozen embryos can transfer them to another state, for example. But when it comes to people who are starting out, they're going to have a tough time finding in Alabama someone willing to freeze their embryos and continue to store them. And is that the case now in Alabama? A, a doctor who performs an IVF treatment could be, what, sued? Yes, under the wrongful uh, death statute, it's a tort statute, so that's civil liability, right? So the idea is that you could be sued uh, just as you would be if you caused the death of a minor, for example. So it's a significant amount of liability. And then there are also questions about whether this interpretation, the judge for the majority calls them extra uterine children, whether that definition of what is a child under Alabama law will be expanded to other statutes, including the criminal law. Well, it is an, an interesting term. Um, it's one that some I've never seen before, extra uterine children. I'm in, and that comes from the Alabama Supreme Court. The wording of the court um, also includes several references to God. Uh, is that problematic, in your opinion, just looking at things uh, you know, clearly through a, a judicial lens? Here's what I'll say, and this was in Chief Justice Parker's concurrence. He talks about the idea that it would be an affront to himself, capital H, for God, and this idea that the wrath of God uh, might befall people. It's highly unusual to see this kind of language. His claim is that Alabama, by several statutes, has passed the constitutional amendment, has indicated that this is the view of the people of Alabama. But I can say if you're not a member of a Judeo-Christian uh, religion— it would seem quite an unusual thing to be told this is the law of Alabama, that God is a part of that law. But that is indeed what Chief Justice Parker has said. And how, how does this ruling, how does it relate to the abortion uh, question in, in the United States? And, and, and I'm wondering, too, with IVF treatment, you're trying to, to help a couple conceive, and yet you're saying under this ruling um, a, a doctor could be um, accused of, of what? killing or hurting a child. I mean, how does, how do the, how does that make sense? Yeah, this is the exact, uh, I think, right question to ask, that essentially the idea here is we have a couple who basically lost their chance to reproduce, lost their chance to use their embryos, and they brought this lawsuit, but the end result is it may be nobody can use IVF in Alabama going forward. In terms of abortion politics, this case can be seen as part of a larger movement, which is called the personhood movement. Uh, in the decision of Dobbs v. Uh, Jackson in the United States, mm -hmm. Roe v. Wade was overturned. In theory, we were turning this question to the states, but there is a group of people who want there not to be a state-by-state -state decision on abortion, but instead a federal law as to abortion, prohibiting abortion across the entire United States. 
And one way to achieve that is to get an interpretation of the Constitution mm-hmm. that fetuses and indeed perhaps embryos are persons under the 14th Amendment. And this is a part of that strategy or can be seen as a part of that strategy. Yeah, yeah. Well, it apparently has worked at least in Alabama. Glenn Cohen with Harvard Law. We appreciate your time and your analysis tonight. Thank you. 